There are less than 3,500 wild tigers remaining worldwide. They are poached for their skin to make rugs for luxury home decor, their bones to make health tonics, and their teeth and claws as trinkets. Other endangered Asian big cats are targeted for the same demands. For decades, all international trade in the parts and products of Asian big cats have been prohibited under the UN Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, CITES. Despite this, since the year 2000, the carcasses and skins of over 5,400 Asian big cats from India, Nepal, Russia and Myanmar have been seized, with more than 90% destined for markets in China. Over the years, CITES has called for tougher actions, including domestic trade bans, the destruction of stockpiles of tiger parts and products, and recognizing the threat posed by trade in captive bred tigers, an end to tiger farming. Some countries have failed to take action against a growing number of illegal operations leaking tigers into the market, sustaining demand for their parts and products. The government of China has sent conflicting messages. In 1993, they banned the use of tiger bone in medicine, but ever since, they have proactively encouraged the breeding and domestication of tigers. There are between 5,000 and 6,000 tigers in captivity. These tigers are not being bred for conservation purposes. We uncovered a system run by the State Forestry Administration of China, the SFA, that permits a legal trade in the skins of captive bred tigers. The cost of captive bred tiger skins is higher than those of wild tigers, leopards and snow leopards. Contrary to the assumption that trade in captive bred tigers would alleviate pressure on animals in the wild, this legal trade is perpetuating demand and stimulating poaching of Asian big cats across Asia. Documenting this legal trade in the skins of captive bred tigers was really about following the paper trail on the SFA website where we, we find a number of documents detailing a wildlife utilisation and marking system under which a growing number of companies appear to have licence to process and sell parts of wildlife including uh, the skins of captive bred tigers. In 2012, Investigators in China went to meet with some of these tiger skin traders to find out how this shadowy trade worked. <laughs> EIA investigators were shown a Siberian tiger skin which came along with a government-issued permit. When the investigators asked the trader whether the skin came from the facility mentioned in the permit, he gave a contradictory response. This company had sold five tiger skins in the first half of 2012 itself. And so had another trader based in a wildlife rescue center who told EIA about the high demand for tiger skins. <laughs> <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> According to the traders EIA met, anyone can buy and sell a tiger skin so long as it comes with an SFA permit issued for a tiger skin that was processed legally and was obtained from a legally bred captive tiger. 
With up to 6,000 tigers kept in 200 facilities across China, banks of tiger carcasses piling up, and dozens more companies licensed under this system, it's likely many more skins have been sold. This was not the only mention of the demand for tiger bone products. A staff at the Qinhuangdao Wildlife Rescue Centre and Wildlife Park told EIA investigators. EIA filmed Tiger Bone Wine for sale at the same compound in 2007. <laughs> Sold as a general tonic and luxury item to high status individuals, Tiger Bone Wine can sell for hundreds of US dollars a bottle. Journalists and wildlife organizations have documented the sale of Tiger Bone Wine at wildlife breeding centers on numerous occasions. Since the 1993 ban on the use of tiger bone, companies are not allowed to list tiger as ingredients on their products. The labelling has changed, but the companies that are producing this bone strengthening wine are still marketing it as containing tiger, and that's sending a mixed message to consumers and to law enforcers. In 2012, we met the agents for one of these Tiger Bone Wine companies who had a startling claim to make. He said that in 2005, the government had issued a secret or internal notification that authorised the limited use of the bones of captive bred tigers to make Tiger Bone Wine for distribution at hospitals. We searched online and we found the title of this secret notification, but not the full content. Unlike the documents relating to the skin trade, this was not publicly available. We have nonetheless been able to document the impact of the release of this secret notification and have come across one company, the Sanhong Biotechnology Company, that's already invested millions in a manufacturing plant that they estimate will turn out 800 tonnes of tiger bone wine a year. Their business plan is published on the website, it talks about the recipe for making tiger bone wine and we've also seen online local government confirmation that the company is making tiger bone wine. Whether or not San Hong is producing tiger bone wine legally or illegally is not clear at all. But then nothing about the tiger bone wine trade has been clear ever since Exposé started in 2006. Chinese government delegates have repeatedly stated their commitment to the 1993 domestic ban on the use of tiger bone in medicine and to stamping out illegal trade, but they have never discussed the parallel legal market for skins. The skins of these captive bred tigers retail at prices up to three times higher than those of wild tigers and several times higher than those of wild leopards and snow leopards. Far from alleviating pressure on the wild animals, the legal trade has sustained a value and desire for these luxury rugs, and many consumers are seeking out cheaper alternatives. EIA's findings raise a number of crucial questions relating to the commitment of the government of China to saving the wild tiger. Non-government organizations and governments are investing millions of dollars in campaigns to end demand. Yet what chance do these efforts have if at the same time the government of the largest consumer of wild tigers and other Asian big cats is promoting a trade in skins of captive bred tigers.
the big cats of Asia are in crisis. Tigers continue to be poached for trade. Captive breeding and illegal trade in tiger parts is only worsening the situation for one of the most endangered species in the world. The international community must not accept any legal trade in tiger parts. A failure to act indicates an implicit endorsement of the skin trade and the beginning of a slippery slope towards accepting a trade in bones from captive bred tigers. Policies must be amended to stop stimulating demand, to stop breeding tigers for trade in their parts and products, and to ban all trade in all tiger parts from all sources.